It is Texas Rangers manager Bruce Bochy. Good afternoon, sir. Hey, guys. How's it going? Well, when y'all are on a winning streak, it's always going well. I got to ask, I heard that the last trip was at least at one point 80s themed. What can you tell us anything about your 80s themed outfit and how that came together? Well, I had a hard time trying to find something, to be honest. Uh, I did order uh, a shirt and a chain, you know, to participate. I didn't want to be that guy, you know, who, who didn't uh, uh, take part in, in the 80s theme uh, uh, deal that, uh, you know, the players' wives had, had put together. So, anyway, I wore a, a, a shirt with a bunch of flames coming off it uh, and I had my gold chain. So, I, I was pretty simple, but I did see some good outfits, Uh of course, a couple of them were me you know, because <laughs> that, that was kind of my time in the 80s. So they had some fun with that. But uh, you know what? It's, it, it just uh, you know made for a good evening. Uh, tough flight, though. You know, we had 40 minutes sitting on the plane with no air conditioning. So uh, oh. it's good that you know we, we were able to have some laughs. Oh, my gosh. 40 minutes on a plane with no AC. Did, like, how did that? Did you, did you find out what happened? Did you get to the bottom of that? Well, I, I think the plane uh, it had to had to have uh, had to get up ten thousand feet or something before they could turn on the AC. I had never heard of that, but uh, so anyway, it was smoking hot. So there was Oof. actually some players back in the back taking shirts off and everything. Uh, it just took a little long, I guess, to get the bags on with uh, it being a family trip, having uh, the wives on this trip and. So uh, it was a different plane than we normally uh, take a little bigger plane. Actually, it was the Patriots plane that they used. Now, I don't know if they still use it, but I was kidding. Uh, they probably <laughs> used it in their first championship because it was uh, uh, first, <laughs> the first year. So the plane was uh, 84. But no, it wasn't, it wasn't a bad plane or anything. It just had a little age to it. So, Bocha, I, I love what you're saying here, it wasn't and the major it's fun. Playing, Mike, but, don't worry. Yeah. But uh, when it comes to you talking about obviously the heat, no air conditioning on the plane. I was talking to uh, another team, and they were saying, you know, what's going to be interesting is coming up now. It's getting hotter around the United States of America. You guys obviously play in an indoor facility here, so you don't have to worry about this. But they're kind of talking about man. You know, those East Coast trips in July and August and the pitcher has to pitch at a pace when the humidity is so high and, and they're sweating a whole bunch. Have you thought about it all what the pitch clock could possibly do to pitchers um, kind of endurance during July and August in outdoor games? Yeah, you you have to uh, you know be aware of it. Uh, the pitcher does. Uh, so we have to take advantage of a, the timeout if needed. Uh, you don't get a lot of them. Uh, you may have to use it, you know, step off when you normally wouldn't use it. Uh, um, maybe a trip to the mound uh, uh, a little bit more often. I mean, those are limited anyway. So anything uh, to help them out. So um, I, I'll say this. Uh, we played here uh you know, it's not July or August yet, but uh, it was perfect here last night, man. Nice, cool weather, nice breeze. So we've been fortunate. We have not had to deal with the heat. And, of course, uh, with our ballpark, you can't have it nicer, believe me. Um, but we may get uh, some heat in New York. I'll be honest, I, I haven't even checked, so I, I don't know what, what it's like there. But you know what? Man, I, I, I'm not really worried about it because Miami, you know, you have the dome there. Uh, we don't go to Atlanta. Uh, you know, Boston may be a little warm. So I, I think we're pretty lucky as, as far as the schedule, not having to deal with uh, a, a lot of the you know, places that can get extremely hot. Boach, I'm kind of curious from June 7th to, I mean, at least I guess, you know, last Friday, there was kind of a weird, for this season at least, it looked kind of different uh, with a, a few more losses than we were used to this year. And I was kind of curious from your side, what's the most difficult part of navigating a lull like that in a season and, you know, trying to limit it from being a too long of a lull. Right. I think the most important thing that we all can do, and especially me, is show up to, uh, to the park and, uh, and be the same. I, 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 I don't know how many times I've said this, but I, it's going to happen. I don't care how good you are. You look at all these teams, uh, 
you know, Tampa. I mean, they went in Oakland and lost two games. Uh, they lost two in San Diego. Uh, uh, you know, they had the best record in baseball. And you go, well, how, how does Oakland beat them? But it, it was a, a bit of a lull. We lost some that we felt we could have won. Uh, we had some bad luck in some, in some games. Uh, I'll go back to that one Angels game, the extra innings. I mean, what else can you do but hit the ball hard and we just couldn't get a runner in, uh, you know, with uh, – in extra innings there. So um, just just be the same. Uh, you know, the ups and downs, they, they will beat you up in, in in this game if you let it. it it's the same with a personal uh, hitting slump or, or a reliever. You know, you, you just got to be able to, you know, the old term, the old cliche, wash it off. Uh, you, you, it, it, it's what you have to do. You don't have a choice in our game. So I was I was proud of our guys and and, and the way they did uh, handle it. Now I'll say this: we we got on a great run, and especially with, uh, hitting with runners in scoring position. We were not going to hit whatever we were hitting with runners in scoring uh, position all year. It just doesn't happen. So we did get a little spoiled there. We did run in some really good pitchers, a lot of number one. So it's all about keeping your head and uh, realize, you know, hey, there's a lot of baseball and you, you can't get caught up in a, you know, a week of maybe tough games. I know it's a short sample size, but the last four games, the bullpen, 16 innings pitched, point. Five six ERA and a 172 batting average against. I was hoping you could give us some insight into what you've seen from the bullpen in the last four games. And then you just used a phrase, do you also have to wash off your successes then so you don't get caught up in that? Yeah, I, I think you do. I, I think you had a the old term, stay humble here. <laughs> this game will, will grab you if you don't. But I'm excited about you know, what the bullpen's doing now. I, I really am. I, I just love, you know, how they have ramped, uh, you know, their uh, their pitching up and, uh, as far as throwing strikes, uh, quality strikes. Uh, you can see how their confidence has grown. They want to be out there. Uh, it's it's been on a good run right now, and it, it's so important that uh, you know these guys, uh, you know, pick it up the way they have because you. You play so many close games. I know we're scoring a lot of runs, but you know you, you it, it's going to happen where you're going to have to win a, a lot of these tight ball games. And I think with the job that Spores is doing, I mean he's uh, he's really nailing it. But this uh, young kid Anderson, uh, uh, Jose Leclerc's picked it up. Berg, uh, look what John King did. I, all of them. I, I mean, I'm excited about where they're at uh, and, and how they're performing and because they're such a big part of our uh, success if we're going to have it. If, if we're going to go where we want to go, that bullpen has to come through for us, and right now they're doing it. Boach Heaney had a really nice uh, bounce-back appearance last night. He's at 72 and a third innings. Last year he pitched 72 and two-thirds innings. I'm wondering how you see the rest of his season playing out. Do you believe hey, every fifth day, as long as he's ready, he's taking the ball, or do you maybe have to back off of the uh, total numbers of innings pitched throughout the season? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, good question. It's uh, it's something we have talked about. We'll keep an eye on him. Uh, uh, you know, his workload. I think you look at the depth of uh, our starting pitching. I, I and I'll bring up Bradford. Uh, Otto's getting close. We do have some guys that can uh, uh, pick up a start if we think we need to back them off a little bit uh, uh, and give them some time, an extra start, or even put them on the IEL, something like that. But the limit, uh, their innings is monitor their work. So uh, it is a, a discussion. It's, our, it's already happened and something we have to be aware of. You've been pushing the Josh Young as an all-star campaign really hard. I know you have bigger concerns probably than who makes the all-star team, but do you also take a sense of pride in, hey, they represent me, they represent our franchise, our organization, when guys make the all-star team? I do, I do. It's uh, you know, it's great to hear the, the talk about uh, you know players in our team that um, could be heading to the all-star game, as they should be. Uh, you look at Josh Young, what he's done. I, 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 nothing would make me happier for him, but uh, or prouder for him. Uh, uh, but we have quite a few guys 
uh, that could be heading there. I wish it was in, in Seattle, to be honest. That's a lot of travel. But uh, <laughs> uh, but as far as uh, being in the game, oh, no question. Uh, um, you know, it'd be awesome to see uh, you know a few Rangers there at the All Star game. Uh, you, you look at what they're doing; it'd be, it, it would be well earned, and uh, so I'm certainly pulling for them. And I uh, hope I hope our fans, uh, you know, are looking forward to, to you know not just seeing them, but helping them get there by voting for them. How big of a deal did you think it was for Josh Young to see his name written third on the lineup card? Yeah, and you know what? I I, I think he was kind of excited about it. Uh, it took him back to his Red Raider days, so he, yeah, I think he was comfortable there. And well, he certainly looked comfortable, didn't he? Uh, geez, goes out there and gets a base hit, scores around the first inning, hits a home run, and and so I, you know, said I may do this against lefties, but you know, right now I I'm gonna I'm gonna run that out there again tonight. I I just like the balance of it. Uh, I'd like, uh, you know, having, you know, uh, a um, left-hand bat behind uh, Odolis. Uh, it just gives us coverage there. Uh, not that Josh wasn't giving us that, but he's a guy that uh, is swinging the bat so well. It, it just breaks up those left-handers. And, and once you get late in a ball game, you, you – you know, you know, you're gonna have a tough lefty trying to go through those two guys. Not not that they they can't hit them, but uh, it does put a little bit more pressure on, on the opposing manager on who on who he'll bring in. Boach, I found a crazy stat that just contradicted a lot of what I thought about baseball. Because you know, in a big league clubhouse, you'll hear hitting coaches and people talk about, hey, get. Uh, you know, five plus pitch at bats are really good at bats. It makes that pitcher work. You you get a better gauge on on their fastball, on their breaking ball, and so I pulled what batters are hitting in the major leagues this year when they have five or more pitches in an at bat, and the batting average is one ninety two. That shocked me. I just thought as a former big league pitcher that when I had to throw five or more pitches to a batter at times that they would gauge what I had better. So can you explain why batters have such a low batting average when they see five or more pitches in an at bat? Yeah, you know what? It's 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 kind of a, a tough deal to, to explain, uh, I think, because – uh, to your point, when you know the hitter sees a lot of pitches, uh, now he's got a reference on what you have. Now, what I will say is, if you're going to be patient up there and maybe take a first pitch, it could be your best pitch to hit. Well, that makes hitting tougher, especially when you look at the stuff that a lot of these guys have and their put away pitches. Uh, you know, especially if it's a nasty split or let's say a slider. Once they once they get ahead, which is the game plan, um, almost every pitcher is to throw strike one, and that's why you you know you'll see a Seager or even uh, Marcus. I mean, how how they attack that pitch, that could be the best pitch you get. So um, it's the old Ted Williams thing: get a good pitch to hit. Now he did believe in the first time around, take the first pitch, you know, just so you do get a reference. But after that, you know, you're looking to hit the first best pitch you see and uh, and do damage on it and so I think that's the biggest reason why you're seeing those averages go down is because of the stuff and the different pitches that these guys have once they get ahead of you and you know now you're fighting for your life up there and uh, you're having a battle you know a guy with a four pitch mix where guys that swing early at the you know, first best pitch they get, you know, that, that average is usually pretty high. You got to play early in Tony Gwynn's career with him on the Padres. What was his, uh, I don't know what his approach was early in counts or first pitch. First pitch, he was swinging. Tony was not a taker. Uh, Tony did not walk a lot, uh, mainly because when he swung, he usually put in play. Mm -hmm. But he was not up there to, you know, to take a pitch. Uh, that was his uh his, his philosophy, uh, probably because, you know, Ted Williams would come to San Diego a lot, you know, before he passed, and, and he and Tony had a lot of conversations. But, uh, you know, and they would talk about that. That first pitch is there. It's where you're you're looking for. It's in your sweet zone. Let it go. And, and 
But in today's time, you know, the walk is talked about so much, the on base percentage. And so that's why I think you're seeing a lot of guys take that first pitch or second pitch with me, which may be the best pitch to hit, you know, trying to work the pitcher and, uh, and draw a walk. Do you believe a guy will ever bat 400 in a full season? I don't. I don't. But, uh, you know, <laughs> obviously uh, we got somebody knocking on the door. It's incredible what he's doing. Uh, Rise. Especially yeah. when you look. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it just – it just amazes me, uh, you know, this guy, he starts to drop down, and he goes five for five. It's not like he's hitting rockets either. His VO off the bat's not all that good, but he just reminds me of uh, Tony Gwynn. He's just got an unbelievable ability to get the bat on the ball, and uh, he just seems to find a hole. It used to frustrate me. I'd tell Tony, I played with him. I go. I, I come your ground ball. Your ground balls go through. Mine don't. <laughs> I, I, I never could figure that out. But uh, then you look at it. Well, they consistently hit hard ground balls where, you know, the rest of us didn't. Boach, whenever I mean, you've traveled a lot in your years as a manager. Do you still have? Do you have like places as a uh, creature of habit that you're like, I'm going to go to this place when I get to Chicago, or do you're like, you know what, I'm going to go find a, the, another best deep dish pizza out here somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, I'm not a big deep dish guy. Uh, but oh, awesome. I, I will Great. say, uh, yeah, but in, in New York, I, I will have one. But uh, uh, we we had it last night after the game. And so, uh, you know, a lot of guys were excited. I just, I've just never been a huge fan. I mean, it's good. I, I'll, I'll have one. Um, yeah, you know what? Uh, Chicago Steakhouse here, it's always been a place. Uh, Joe's, uh, what, Stone Crab House here in Chicago. But we have three night games. I'll be honest, I, I haven't left the hotel. Uh, um, uh, you know, I'll go to the ballpark here uh, in a few minutes. We have a late uh, workout today, so the guys can have a recovery. So I'm, I'm leaving a little bit later myself. Um, but after the game, we just come right back. Now, in New York, we do have a day off. Uh, I will plan a staff meeting. Don't know where... Uh, I'm going, and uh, you have to remember, I've been out for three years, so uh-huh. uh, I, I, I I need a little help on, uh, you know, what's the newest and latest uh, there in New York City uh, to take the staff out to. On the days when you just go back to the hotel on the road, is there, like, something you do to unwind? Do you throw on Netflix? <laughs> like, what's your what's your routine to wind down for Watch the day? Watch pitch sequences? Yeah. Yeah, that's funny you said Netflix. Yeah, I got Bobby Bandolo. He loads me up with the Netflix thing. Uh, I'm watching The Darkest Hour now with Winston Churchill, and then I'll come back and watch that a little bit to kind of unwind. Uh, you know, sometimes I'll just, you know, go through, uh, uh, you know, some emails and stuff i got to catch up with. That's kind of my time to, to do that. But, uh yeah, I, I've never been a big Netflix guy, but they got me into it, got my headphones, and, uh, uh, you know, I may, you know, if I'm not doing something, uh, you know, for the next uh, series, I'll, I'll, I'll watch something on Netflix. Do you do you let uh, emails stay in your inbox, or do you delete them all? Because Kevin has to have his e- email gotta, inbox cleaned gotta. every day, and I'm like, nah, I got 3,000 in there, I'm good. Yeah, I'm like you. I, I think, I, yeah, I may have 3,000. I'm not bad about it. Uh, you know why? Because, I, you know, I, I, I keep saying I'll get back to them. I, I get so many and until uh, so, uh, they uh, pile up. and then. Uh, but I, I need to clean it up. I, 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 it, does, uh, it does make life easier. Uh, I think it, it, if you clean it up, and uh, it, it gets to be a little too much. Well, we appreciate the time as always, and let's keep that winning streak rolling. He can just keep rolling. managing and doing yeah, his thing. He, I think we'll let him do that. Don't worry about Kevin. that yeah. for now. Just keep managing. You're doing great. All right, guys. Good talking with you.